Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22 of an Old Guy Gaming. It is June the 1st, and we have a lot of work to do this month. So first of all, I didn't bring you back uh, for an end-of-the-month update in May because basically nothing happened in May. It was like probably the slowest, boringest month I've, <laughs> I've had so far in the game. Uh, we did have some contracts that came up, but they were they were all just really nothing. I mean, weeding contracts and one really tiny fertilizer contract that didn't mess with it. Um, so here's the, the ledger for May, uh, property maintenance 799, mysterious money here, uh, water costs for the cattle barn and our, we paid our worker and that was it. So that's all that happened to me. I pretty much just blew right through it because there was nothing else to do. Uh, as far as our animals go, uh, chickens, I, I did go get some, the rest of the wheat that I had at the train station for the chickens. So they're good for a couple more months. Uh, we are going to need to feed the cows again. Uh, but we'll probably wait for a couple of more days uh, before we do that. But we will feed them by the end of June, and then they'll be good. We'll have another load of milk to take over to the dairy. The dairy should be fine for now uh, for milk, just so we want to make sure it always keeps going. So, yeah, it still has 7,400 liters, so it's still going on uh, making butter and cheese for us. And as far as the greenhouses go, I think I got everything switched over to manure now, except for this one. So I still have an, enough uh, of the solid fertilizer in here for this to go for two to three more days before I switch this one to manure. But everything else is now on the manure version of the produce. Um, so basically, there, you know, you, you have two tomatoes, two lettuces, two strawberries, that sort of thing. And it's these lower ones that uses manure here instead of um, the, the normal fertilizer. So everything else is switched over to manure and every greenhouse has manure in it and not completely full, but pretty full. Um, Cause I did, I did go get uh, some manure in May uh, for that too. Okay. So we're good to go there. Uh, let's see, as far as eggs go, we have, we still have 12,000, uh, liters there. We have 9,388 liters of butter, 3,610 for cheese. Uh, lettuce is up to 138,000 and change tomatoes, 31 and change and strawberry 63 and change. Okay. Very good. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, the two big things that have to happen this month are harvesting our hay and harvesting our barley because our barley is now ready over here in this field. So we're going to get we're going to do that first and then we'll also make straw of course and then this field I'm also going to convert over into a hay field. Uh, now after after we convert this field to hay right here I might not I might not do more hay for a while. Because I, I do plan on purchasing 51, and then I'm trying to decide if I want to go this direction and start looking at 56 and 57, or go this direction and start looking at these fields here. But I'm going to start focusing next on, on um, a grain and also sugar beets. The reason for that is because... The plan in uh, the next farm upgrade at the end of the year or beginning of the next year after we sell everything and get all that money is to start looking at a grain mill, of, of, you know, to produce flour and a sugar mill to produce sugar. Uh, and both of those are just intermediary uh, productions for the end productions that we'll need them later on. But I'm, I, I'm, I, I doubt I'm going to have enough money to, to do those and the end productions. Plus, I'm also I also have plans to expand the animals too. So it just kind of depends how the money goes. But the point being that we uh, I'm probably going to not continue expanding or or converting new fields into hay. We're going to start doing some other crops as time goes on uh, to support the productions that I want to get. Um, but this one I have planned all along to convert to hay, which we will do after we get the barley off of it. And of course, this will give us a huge supply of barley for our chickens and we still have in storage uh we still have thirty-one thousand in storage even now um so that's just going to add to it but once we you know, eventually get the grain mill you know then we'll start putting uh, a good portion of that barley into into the grain mill to make flour okay so anyway 
Uh, with that being said, let's jump on into our combine here and harvest some barley. Oh, gotta fix my wheel again. There we go. For some reason, my wheel sometimes resets and it likes to default to 900 degrees of rotation, which is like, there's no way I would ever use that much rotation, at least not in this. Oh, are we going to be able to clear this? Not really. OK, we have to go the other way, uh, at least not in this game. You know, you might use that much rotation, say, in a racing game, perhaps, but not in farming sim. I like it on the smallest setting, which is 270 degrees of rotation for this game. So we'll let, have a nice little supply of barley, and we'll also get ourselves a pretty decent chunk of straw from this field, too. I would like to have a little more straw than we currently have, uh, just because we sold so much of it last year uh, to hit that $1 million mark, which was just amazing. I'll probably do the headland on the barley, and then I'll let a worker finish the rest of it so I can get started on the hay. We'll see how this oversized header does. All right, we want to make sure we are in swath mode, which we are. Yep, we are. OK. Let's harvest some barley. One pass gave us almost a full load here. So let's get um, the worker going and we'll go grab our, our big, big trailer. We should be able to fit this whole field in that trailer, I'm thinking. Um, let's get... I think I want to use you. Come on. Sometimes my button does weird stuff there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll go get the, the big trailer out of the barn. All right, let's load her up.
Okay, so we'll just let uh, the combine do its thing. And we are going to get started on our hay. Uh, so let's jump in the big M here. Coolest machine ever. And start cutting some hay. We're going to get a nice, big, juicy hay harvest this time with all these fields, that, new fields that we put in. Um, one thing I want to consider, though, is I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Well, we still need to do our, our headland up here, so let's get that done first. Because I've extended the fields, I'm, I want to kind of cut it in such a way that, to where the worker can take over for me and get, you know, as much of it done as possible without me having to, you know, kind of prepare the field. Prepare? Prepare, yeah, prepare the field for them first. Just because I have such irregular fields, you know. All right. Now, am I... Actually, hold on. Turn that off for a second. Am I in swapping mode? I think I am. Let's just double check. Yeah, we are. Okay. Very much looking forward to seeing how much hay we get from this next harvest. It's going to be good. Oh, I guess we keep going this way. I forgot. We own this land, too. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't cut this grass. I mean, it cuts it, but it doesn't swath it there. Kind of odd, actually. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to keep going straight on through. And I'll have to take care of the, the irregular spots. Get out the way, lady. The big M's coming through. So now, let's go along through here. Okay, now what I want to do, looks like our worker's about full on the combine again. If I was going to cut the whole entire field, I'd just go. But again, I'm trying to set it up to where the worker can handle it without too much weirdness going on. Okay, so we want this to be straight through this way. And then that nice little rectangle there, the worker can do. And then I'll take care of the other stuff. Okay, so let's set the worker loose while we go get another load of barley. Sure takes a long time for those rear mowers to lower unless you're in motion if you're in motion then they come down more quickly okay looks like that was pretty good timing combine is going the other direction though so we're gonna actually take over because I, I i can't drive over my, my barley there the massey ferguson ideal combine was up for sale i think last month or the month before it was sure tempting but very expensive and not something we absolutely need right now, so we, we must continue to be frugal. Look at that thing just flying. <laughs> the big M. I love it. 15 miles an hour, man. To cut hay, that's just amazing.
You know, actually, I think I'm going to just let him finish that part of the hayfield, and I'll just keep working on this. Um, I'm trying to think if there's something else I could be doing in the meantime, but not really. I mean, I could start baling, but I'd rather, you know, get a little further ahead on the, the hay first. So, yeah, I'll just work on this for a bit. It's not going to take too much longer to finish this anyway. Oh, actually, I could get started on baling the straw. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. That's what we'll do. Okay, we should be set to 240 centimeter bales. We are. Let's go make some straw. Oh, that dude's already done cutting the field. My goodness. All right. You know what? Actually, I want to keep him going. So let's um, hold off on the straw for a moment. Moment. There is a mod called Follow Me that you can actually use um, to get the AI to bail for you. Um, you basically, but you have to be like cutting the hay in front of him or or windrowing or whatever, and then they will just follow along and they'll bail the hay. It's not. It doesn't work perfectly, but it works actually surprisingly well because I, I saw someone else using it on YouTube. And uh, that's something we might consider trying at some point. Um, some of you guys were also wanting me to try the GPS mod, and I think I will give that a try. Just have to figure out, you know, when I'm going to do that. But yeah, might as well give it a try, right? Okay, let me just knock out the rest of this. It won't take too long. And then we can get him started on the big field.
to turn the worker loose now. Go to it, buddy. Beautiful. Okay, let's start this guy back up and get the rest of the grain out of the combine. And then we're just going to take all this grain to the train station for now. There's nothing else I can do with it. Um, actually, we could we could top off the chickens. We might as well do that first. Beautiful. Okay, we'll put the combine away. I don't understand why it's not uh, triggering for me. What am I doing wrong? Is it because it's on the the truck, so it's not registering properly? Pretty sure I've tipped with this truck before. All right, well. Let's hook the tractor up to it and see what that happens. Oh, I I know what the problem was. I forgot to hook up the PTO. Because this has a, a conveyor bed. Okay, that explains it. All right. Mystery solved. So that should give our chickens a full thing of grain. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to run this over to the train station. And then when I get back, it'll be time to start... Uh, get the the barley uh, I'm sorry not the barley the straw bailed up look at all that barley okay so we now have 54,328 liters of barley start up beautiful we will most likely have our grain mill before that runs out from feeding the chickens uh, if everything goes according to plan anyway All right, guys, that uh, wraps up the straw baling, and we're pretty much done with uh, the hay cutting as well. So um, let's turn that off. And I guess we might as well just run these these two bales straight over to the, to the barn. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to bale all of my hay. I'm just going to use my round baler and make silage bales and put them in the silage bale holder uh, for sale in January. And um, let's look at something here, too. Oh, he just finished. Look at that. I don't know why they miss that little, little bit there, but they do. Uh, so if we will look at the uh, statistics, we have... We've created 10 straw bales from our barley field. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create all the silage bales for sale. And um, I'm just going to do that off camera. You guys have seen me do it a million times. And then when I'm finished with that, I'll bring you back and show you what the actual bale count um, is. And it should be pretty good. Okay, let's throw these guys in here. And I'll go pick up the other uh, straw bales too and bring those over to the barn as well. Uh, okay, so yeah, I'll bring you back when I'm finished with um, I'm, I'm baling our hay here and show you the number of bales that we get. Should be good. See you in a bit. All right, guys, I'm back, and uh, I have, as you can see, uh, been in the process of baling. 
and I'm gonna try something. Um, some of these windrows are just a tad bit wide, and so what happens, you know, is I leave little tiny bits of it behind, as you can see over here. Then I have to go back and pick it up again. So, um, hold on, my wheel rotation's all messed up again. Um, so I have um, downloaded, actually I downloaded these a while back, I just haven't used them yet, a couple of went special types of windrowers or rakes. I have the Lizard R90 and uh, the Samaz Twist 600. Now, what these things, what you can do with these things is you can actually mount them behind the tractor and in front of the baler, and they rake the hay right directly into the baler, so you basically don't miss anything. This is a 10.3-meter a width, but um, the thing is is that my my big M is, is uh, you know, has a 10-meter swath, so I don't know if I would, would be able to pick up two rows at the same time with this. Now, if this is something I started using on a regular basis, I would, um, I probably wouldn't windrow. I'd probably just, you know, do loose cut and then, you know, just have this pick everything up. Um, but what I'm thinking is because I have, because I don't think this is going to be able to pick up the windrows uh, two at a time. Um, it actually, it might. Hmm. It might. I mean, if we could do two windrows at a time, that would, you know, cut the time in half, basically, right? The other thing is we'd get the smaller one, and then we just, you know, keep going over one windrow, but then we're not going to miss anything. It's going to pick everything up in one pass. Um. All right, so how much is it going to cost for us to lease this? I, I, I wouldn't buy it right now unless I, I well, if I like it, I, I'll eventually buy it, but. I just want to test it right now. So this is going to cost us, eh, it's only going to cost $1,657 to lease. So let's, let's try this one. And um, if I like it, I'll buy it because if we can hit two rows at a time, that's going to, um, well, man, I wonder if that would clog the baler though. I don't know. Let's go hook it up and give it a try. Now, here's something else that I'm going to do. And this might make a couple of you cringe, but it is what it is. The largest cultivator in the game, and the field creator version of it, incidentally, is on sale for $45,889. Only way I can get this right now is to take out a loan. But um, this has a working width of 15.7 meters, whereas our current cultivator is only 12 meters. And we can pull it with the man truck, because the man truck has 500 horse. So I think we're going to get that. That This is also on sale, but I don't think we need two of these. Um, I would get two of these if I could, you know, if I could, if the workers could use them and help me pick bales up, but they can't. And, you know, when, when we're selling our silage in, Jan, you know, December, January, I can just lease one of these for a temporary period of time. So it doesn't really make sense for me to, to get, to buy two of these. Now I could do the little swap thing, but my, you know, my trailer, I'm only going to get like seven grand for it. And so I'm still going to, it's still going to cost me, <clears throat> excuse me, another 20,000 ish to buy this. And I don't think that's worth it, but this, this we're going to do. Um, I just, you know, I, I think that in the long run, that's going to save us a lot of, a lot of time, um, mostly with cultivate, but we could also use it to create new fields. Um, and that would save a ton of time. Now, the problem with creating new fields though, with a cultivator um, well, actually, it, that, well, let me, let me rephrase this. The advantage of creating new fields with a subsoiler is you won't get any weeds. So I'm thinking that if I used that cultivator to create new fields, it could mean we have to then mess with weeds. So I don't know. We'll have to, I'll have to think about that, but I'm not really getting it primarily for, um, uh, for creating fields, I'm getting it for, you know, that better width for cultivating so we can get the cultivating contracts done much quicker uh, because I do generally do all of those and it's pretty good money. And, um, yeah, so I think we're going to do that. Nevertheless, let's see. So I think the way this works is let's just drop this off for a second. 
I think we hook up to this first, and then we hook the baler up behind it. And if we can hit two, two swaths at the same time, that would be fantastic. Um, okay, I'm not getting the option to hook it up. Am I too close to it? Alright, um, when I looked at the pictures on the mod hub, <clears throat> excuse me, it showed this configuration. Am I supposed to... I'm not actually really seeing a hitch here, though. Here, let's pull away from it again. Maybe I have to mount it in the front of the tractor. Yeah, there's no... There's no hitch option here, so I guess we have to put this in the front of the tractor. I mean, that should work, too. I don't see why it wouldn't. No, uh, no PTO hookup? Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Okay, so yeah, let's, um, let's give this a try. I mean, this will work even on single rows, uh, but... If I was going to do single rows, it would probably make more sense to use the smaller one just because, you know, for maneuvering purposes. But if we can hit two at a time, this is going to be fantastic. And then again, the other thing is, if we use it in the future, it might not even be worth it to, to windrow. Well, actually it kind of is though, because if we don't windrow, then we have to be fairly accurate with this when we're picking up the the loose hay we could still miss parts of it whereas if it's windrowed you're not going to miss any of it it doesn't really change anything in terms of uh, operating the big m so it doesn't affect any, the speed of that part of things this is <laughs> this is weird looking man it's kind of cool though Okay, so what I want to do is, let's get over here. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to hit two rows at the same time. Um, <clears throat> because, <clears throat> excuse me, if we get right in the center, yeah, it isn't going to pick them up. Okay, so that means that, It means one of two things. It means we eat, I mean, assuming we, we do this full time, we, we, we buy it and just start doing it this way all the time. We either get the smaller one or we don't windrow and we just pick up the hay with this. Cause then, cause we're basically, well, you know what though? I think it's six and one half does the other when you really think about it, because this is basically 10 meters worth of windrow here. Right, because that's what the that's what the big M cuts is a ten meter swath. And again, the advantage of this is I don't have to be super accurate as long as that rake is within you know the the swath area. We're good to go. Okay, so let's switch over to here. And now we're pretty much, even if we're like way off to the side here. Oh, I like that. I like that. That gives us, that gives us a way bigger, oh, well, the bale thingies, margin for error, you know, in terms of not having to be exactly over the windrow. This is cool, man. 
and again I think we could easily get away with the with the smaller one because you know the advantage of the smaller one is again is if we're in a kind of a tighter area we will have a little more maneuverability all right you know what I want to try I know this is not the most economical thing to do but I want to try oh I don't have the bail drop on I'm going what's going on here I want to try this the smaller one it's not it, it's gonna be really cheap to lease it all right let's squirt that one out and actually if we return this one now we won't get the, another hourly fee on it anyway Let's use it to kind of clean up some of this other stuff we left behind, though. I really like this, man. You know, I think the reason I thought you attach this from behind is because there's a mod that combines this rake with a baler, but it's already attached to the baler. So that's why I think why I was a little confused about that. This is really slick, though. <laughs> I love this. Uh, okay, so here, let's go ahead and stop that, and we'll disconnect it, and let's return this. So this does work quite well, but again, if we're going to keep using the, the swaths, it makes sense to use the smaller one. All right, so let's return that. And we'll go back to the store, and let's try the shorter one, the smaller one, just for more maneuverability. So that's only going to cost us um, $795 to lease. Does it? Yeah. Since we're just leasing it, does it have a color change option? It doesn't. Okay. That's fine. It's, it's not exactly the same green as the... Yeah, it doesn't matter what color it is, actually. I don't care. Uh, okay. Let's go grab that real quick. Assuming we also attach that one to the front as well. And then um, if I like this, which I probably will, we'll just buy it. It's not that expensive. But, you know, I'm... I'm generally speaking, I'm a little bit of a completionist, so it just bugs me when I leave those little tiny patches of grass behind but you you have to be right directly over the center of those rows to get it all and sometimes that just doesn't happen um okay so we want to attach from this side oh wait a minute now is this one does this one actually whoops where am i going does this one actually have two hitches no i think that's just the it's little stand Yeah, I think that's what that is. Okay, so let's pull around here. The other nice thing about these tools is when you do need to make hay, um, you don't have to w do the windrowing step. You just go. So that, that makes this super valuable from that standpoint alone. Okay, cool. This one <clears throat> folds up a little nicer than the other one, too, for transportation, because it's not sticking out to the sides. <laughs> Me likey. Now, the, the other one, though, the Lizard R90 would be better for, for hay, um, because, of course, you're going to be, be able to pick up more of it. So, I don't know, maybe, we, maybe we'll buy both of them. Neither one of them are really all that expensive. Uh, okay. Let's get lined up here. And... Hold it down. Cool. 
Okay, and let's switch back to the baler. Yeah, that, that's just because we don't have the baler lined up straight. Oh, this is nice, yeah. So even if I'm, I space off and I wander off to the side a little bit, oh, course correction. We're good, man. Well, actually, we did miss a little patch there, so you still have, still have to kind of stay in the middle, but it's much more forgiving than, you know, than without it, right? So. Main thing is you don't have to worry about being directly in the center. Now, one of you guys mentioned to me in the comments about maybe getting the, I guess it's called the Vicon Fast Baler. Um, and it's a, it's the Fast Baler because you don't have to stop to eject the bale. The downside to it, though, is that it may, it only does the small round bales, like the one, 125 centimeter bales. So, you know, using something like that would be a trade-off because we would be able to bale faster, but on selling day, we'd have more trips that we'd have to make because the bales are smaller, so there's more of them. So I guess I'm not really sure in my own mind if that's, you know, an, an even trade-off or even going to cost us more time. I'm not really sure. Now, I want to try something else. I'm going to see if I can use this to grab this little bit of hay in the corner here that I couldn't get to before. This bale is going to be right smack dab in the way here. Let's just get get it out of here. Okay, so if I kind of approach it like this, yeah, see, it's not going to pull that that in, but did it pull enough in for us to get at least part of it? Here, let's line up the baler this way. Ah, uh, there's a piece of wood there, too. Let's just toss that in the ditch. <laughs> no, still didn't quite want to pick that up. Okay. Well, that's all right. These little tufts of grass that are left over were from the worker. I cleaned up and repaired and parked the big end before I realized that they had done that. So I'm probably just gonna leave leave it. It's not worth pulling pulling it all back out again just for a couple little tufts of grass. Oh, I should probably lower my pickup on the baler if I wanted to actually bale. Eh? Funny how that works. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm digging this, man. I don't know though. Maybe maybe we should just get the bigger one because the bigger one, you know, we're gonna we're gonna really want to use that for doing hay, and we don't need a windrower at all. Cool. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to um, cut the camera here and finish the baling. I'll bring you back when we're all done and um, show you how many bales that we made. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, guys. We're back, and I have exactly six full stacks of silage bales. That's the most I've ever, ever had to date. Um, you know, 
um, because we've expanded our fields and stuff. So that's going to equate to over $150,000 uh, because when the price is good on the silage, it's um, we get a little over $25,000 per load per stack here. So that's a pretty good haul. And we have another we have another um, third cutting coming up with the second uh grow or, or stage of growth on the hay which is you know gives us more and then we'll and we still have a fourth hay cutting on the first stage uh so yeah i ex fully expect to clear four hundred thousand and maybe even five hundred thousand dollars um on our silage this january uh, december january you know whenever the price is good in fact let's look at that real quick uh silage uh silage is usually in January. Uh, yep, so January is still going to be the, unless that changes, which it could, uh, the time to sell. So, yeah, fantastic. Very, very pleased so far with, um, you know, our yield that we've, we're have we getting off these fields. Now, um, the barley field over there, 50-something or other, what is that field? Uh, 50. It's 50. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's going to be converted to hay too, in case you haven't heard my plans from previous episodes. We're going to convert this to hay and then I'm going to probably stop, like I had said, uh, I'm going to probably stop converting fields to hay and start doing other uh, products, particularly probably wheat or barley um, and sugar beets in preparation for a grain mill um, production and a sugar mill production. Um, so it is my plan to purchase 51 probably next. And then I'm probably going to be looking at these fields over here for, you know, our next purchases or maybe these we'll, we'll see. Um, I mean, it could be, it, it could be nice to put just a big old, you know, um, planting of wheat or barley on 57 and then sugar beets on 56. And that would give us a huge amount of both of those products. If I could afford to buy these now, if we look at this, yeah, that's three hundred seventy-two thousand, and this is two hundred sixty-six thousand. So basically, we would need oh about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to purchase both of those fields. There's a lot of grassland area here too to expand this field, um, and even here too. You know, mostly on this side. Uh, so you know, we, I would do what I usually do. I would make those fields larger. At the very least for 56, I would at least square it off, you know, and get rid of the round thing so we have a nice rectangular field. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do that, of course, with 57, but, um, you know, square this off, and then we could still harvest this as meadow grass just to get a little extra something from it. So anyway, lots of options there for sure. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, let you guys go here, and uh, in the next episode we'll get field 50 prepped. Uh, for a uh, hay planting and we'll need to uh, feed the cows and I think that's it. I, I don't know if I told showed you guys this or not, but the contracts, I'm probably not going to do any contracts um, in June because they're just not that good. Um, you know, we've got some harvesting contracts here. Well, we do have some cultivating. We could do the, oh, right, we want to get that big cultivator too, right? Um, these aren't these aren't very big fields, but, I mean, on the other hand, I can knock them out really quick. That's another 3000 bucks right there. Um, so, yeah, let's accept these. But I, I'm not going to waste my time with these harvesting. They're just not worth it, you know? Um, they're too small uh, for the effort that we would have to put into it, and we wouldn't get almost anything at all extra at the end. From doing them so yeah I'm, I'm just gonna let those go i will do these cultivating contracts so it looks like that's all that's left for may or for june and chickens are good on food i do have to pick up the eggs and i'm gonna feed we'll do a um a feeding of the cows at the end of june or maybe even tomorrow we'll see how you know how things go with them and then of course uh, we'll do another milk run to the dairy and that sort of thing uh, but yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna let you go here. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. Look at all that hay. That is awesome. And we got uh, ten more bales of straw too out of the deal. So I'm feeling pretty good about the farm, man. Things are going well. All right. See you in the next episode. Bye bye.